praise the Lord for another day, another morning. The weather not so clement, but uh, still the Lord is kind. We invite you to bow our heads as we pray together. Lord and Father in heaven, we invite you to be among us as we open your word. We are finite. Our wisdom is very limited. We actually are foolish. Lord, we invite you to be with us. What shall be said, may it have heaven's approval. Guide everything in the name we pray. Amen. We praise the Lord this morning. Our homily this morning will uh, uh, be a little bit historical. As I told you, I am a student of Solusi, and I am somebody who believes in the mission of this place. And uh, it's, uh, as I said, these discourses are preparatory in nature. We are entering the week of prayer, but where to enter? And uh, when we have entered, you will testify that we have entered. And I am here uh, preparing almost like John the Baptist. I am preparing the way. And I invite you not to be diagnosed with COVID this week. Uh, and I invite you not to fall sick this week and not to die this week. Uh, if you want to die, die later. After you have experienced this powerful week that the Lord has given unto us, I am extremely excited and uh, therefore as uh, we prepare, as we work on this great week, let's direct our attention to Matthew 21. When Jesus is uh, lamenting at the temple, he enters the temple in Matthew chapter 21, and uh, as he enters the temple, he begins to drive out the money changers who are there in the temple, the traitors who are there. Then uh, he makes this statement in verse 18, and he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Uh, then he begins to perform the miracles in the temple. Jesus says his house shall be a place of prayer. And uh, he is quoting the prophets in the Old Testament. And uh, in the Old Testament, is, it is a house of prayer for all nations. It is a house of prayer for all nations. And uh, I quickly take you to the Solusi story, which will be our focal point this morning. You know, as I told you yesterday, I'm, um, I'm an African preacher, and uh, we have this tendency to be mobile. Uh, am I audible? No. Okay. Oh, okay. That's fine. Africans were not made for, for pulpits. We used to speak under trees. So that's why we would meet under trees and have our meetings under those trees and move around. When we would get angry or get excited, we would move around. 
the tree. When we got to the Solis story, something very exciting that moves me. Sometimes we don't know the year, but most likely before 1870, a man came here to Solusi, to this area. It was not known as Solusi then. He came from between Karipa and Gokwe. We don't know the exact location, but from around that area. And uh, he belonged to an ethnic group called Vashangwe. The Vashangwe people are found around Gokwe, from Gokwe to Karipa. It was their region. Now there are few of them, and uh, many of them don't want this identity. Some do, but many of them no longer want this identity. He belonged to the Bashanko people. Then the Bashanko people used to trade in tobacco. They would go around selling tobacco, trading, and uh, they would get chickens, get goats, etc., from selling from the process of tobacco. Their language, it's uh, close to Shona, uh, but it's slightly different. So he came here. When he got here, he got here as a tobacco merchant. And when he got here, he, instead of uh, selling and moving, he had been itinerating. They would come to a place, sell, and uh, go. But when he got here, he somehow did not move. And uh, he married a girl from this area. There were two influential families. The chief in this place was Mlev. And uh, the other family, which was very influential in this place, was the Mazvisa family. It was the Mlevus and the Mazvisas who were in this place. The chief was Mlevu, and the Mazvisas were the headmen. But this man, his name was Muandu. When he got here, he married, and uh, he gave birth to a son, only one child with this woman. The identity of the woman we are yet to establish. We are still searching for the identity of the woman, but most likely a love woman. And uh, he, they had one child, and uh, that child in, in, in Chikalanga, in uh, the Kalanga language, he was called Saluhwe. And uh, this child grew, and uh, after he had grown, missionaries came here in 1894. They were namely uh, Peter Vessels and uh, I.P. Beton and uh, Sparrow. They had gone to Cecil John Rhodes in 1894 to ask for land. Cecil John Rhodes, at that time, he was the Prime Minister of the Cape. You remember, uh, especially those who have studied the South African history, the Africaners had moved uh, the Great Trek, they had moved to Houteng. And uh, it was the Africaners who were in uh, Houteng, Johannesburg, etc. And uh, in the Cape, it was mostly the British who were in charge of the Cape. So John Rhodes had bought this area to be not bought as such. He had not bought actually. He had taken 
this place after the rat concession of uh, 1890. He had uh, taken this place as his own, the wall of uh, Zimbabwe. And uh, the missionaries went to him to ask for land. And uh, he directed them to land Star Jameson, who was in Bulawayo at the time. And uh, they came here, 1894. I won't go into the other details. But uh, they came here. When they got here, they were supposed to look for land to establish a mission. And they were directed, uh, not directed, but they searched and they came here to talk to the people. And the chief, as I told you, was Mlev. And the other family, it was the Mazvisas. But now strangers had come and they sent Saluhwe, the son of Mwandu. He was a stranger. He was a son of a stranger. He did not belong here. And they sent him to meet the missionaries who had come. And the missionaries explained their story. We have come here to build an industrial mission. And the missionaries uh, came, Peter Vessels had become a millionaire because his farm, uh, at his farm, diamonds had been established. So he came here, he was sponsoring the trip actually. And he was putting uh, on his jacket, and Saluhwe, who had been uh, sent by him level to meet the missionaries, uh, came uh, to meet the missionaries, and he was putting on uh, his uh, on his skins, and uh, the missionary vessels took off his jacket and gave it to Saluhwe to put on. No shirt inside, nothing, no trouser, just the jacket on top, and he put it on and uh, dressed, and they talked. And Saluhwe said, no, it's okay. They can build the machine. It's okay, we welcome you. And the fact that I'm rushing to, Saluhwe was not from here, and the name was corrupted to Soluswe. And we came to have Solusi mission. Soluswe was not from here, he was an outsider. Then the missionaries came later uh, to establish Solus. Now uh, they had gotten the land, and they chose this place. It's a uh, it's strange why they chose this place. It's arid, very dry, and prone to many diseases, malaria, etc. And it's very infertile soils. There are very fertile soils in Zimbabwe. Nice, nice places. But they chose this place. And they said, we want to establish the mission here at Solus. After they had done that, they uh, came, now the party came later in uh, 1895. The party from America, it had George Byron trip. It had, uh, uh, the other one was uh, Dr. Kamichael. And uh, also, as part of the trip, there was F.B. Armitage. Then uh, there was uh, also uh, W.H. Anderson, William Harry Anderson. These were with their families, except for George Carmichael. They came here, 1895. And uh, they came right close to the cafeteria. That's where they, uh, that's where uh, Sparrow had built the mission house for the missionaries, and uh, they camped there, slept there. And 
they started to work in this place. It was not easy. Very extremely difficult. People were suspicious of any, anybody, an outsider, and they were very extremely resistant. Kind, they would not fight, but they were very suspicious of uh, the missionaries. And it was quite tough, but they soldiered on. Then 1897, something happened. There was the rebellion, which was much more pronounced in this part of the country, and the missionaries had to rush to Bulawayo. When they got there, they came across two people who were very instrumental in the development of Solusi. One of those that they met, he had come with other missionaries for other churches, not Seventh-day Adventist. And that man was John Ntaba Lutuli. Ntaba Lutuli could read and write, he could speak English, but also he was Zulu. He had come from South Africa with other missionaries. So he could speak Ndebele, which was generally the language which was spoken in this part. So they invited him and said, please, can you come and join us? And he said, for sure, I can come. And the other one was Alvin Chabang. Chabang as well, he had also come with another group from South Africa. And uh, he was Chabangu, could not really speak English, but he was handy. Uh, and uh, he came with Lutuli. They came to this place. And Lutuli began to teach in the classes. He had to teach people how to read and to write. So he is the first teacher at Solusi. Lutuli from South Africa, Muandu from Karipa. Then missionaries continued working. 1898, unfortunately, there was the malaria epidemic and missionaries died. One of those who died was George Kamaikel. He is buried there at the Solusi Cemetery. If you get time, uh, there are no costs there. Those missionaries died long ago. So in case you fear costs, uh, they can, uh, they, they are harmless. Number one, they are harmless. But those died too long ago. So they cannot be angry with you for getting there. I usually go there. Uh, not because I need the spirits, but I need the spirit. Uh, I need to be inspired. As I get to those graves, every year I make it a point to get there and just get there. We won't suspect anything. Those graves are harmless. That's a museum, actually. It's not a graveyard. It's a museum. Go there. Uh, and George Carmichael died. Then uh, after him, there was George Byron Tripp Jr. Byron Tripp was the head of this school died. Uh, his son died, and uh, Tripp died as well, the father. Then Mrs. Amitage as well died. She didn't die here. She died in Kimberley, uh, looking for uh, healing in South Africa. And uh, also John Ntabalutuli died. Uh, and something interesting, which some of you, most of you know, Albert Lutuli was born here in this campus, Solusi campus. So I usually say Lutuli House must be at Solusi before it can be built in South Africa. It's here at Solusi because this is where he was born. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, that had happened, 1898. Then later on, another young man came. The young man who came, they called him Sama. His name was Jim Mayenza. He came and joined the Mazwisa family. He had come with another Zambian brother, 
and uh, he came here, he could speak English, he could read and write. And he came and uh, quite intelligent, uh, quite capable, and he was taught, and uh, he became the first person here in this country. As I told you, we had Richard Moko in South Africa, we had uh, David Kalaka in Lesotho, we were baptized earlier. But in Zimbabwe, the first one to be baptized was Jim Mayenza. There were seven of them, seven or eight. It was 1 December 1900. They were supposed to be baptized by Pastor F.L. Mead uh, in uh, Lukhumbe River, just close to the where we have the most of them now. The others saw Jim Mayenza being baptized and they ran away. They thought the missionaries were drowning Mayenza. So it was Mayenza who was baptized that day. Only Mayenza was baptized on that day. And Mayenza, his roots from Zambia. He was Tonga from Zambia. And uh, we have solution. We have these characters, all of them. And I could have told you many other things, but let me first focus on this. We have Muandu. He didn't come from here. He came from around Kariba. And he gave birth to Solusu. Solusu Mission is named after Solusu, who is the son, Saluhwe, actually, who is the son of Mwandu. Not Ndebele, not Kalanga, not Shona. He came here. So nobody has monopoly over solution. The arrogance that no, this is in Matebele land. Solusi is, it was not built by the Ndebele's, this place. It was not. When they were busy building Solusi, me, my grandfa grandfathers there in the Midlands, they were busy going to Matopo to look for rain, Matogeni. That's what they were doing when others were busy building Solusi. It was not built by the Shona. No. Uh, it was not built. It was built by all nations. Shona, Ndebele, Kalanga, etc. It was built by all nations. By the whites, we have South Africans. Solusi was international right from its inception. It had Zambians, it had South Africans, it had different ethnic groups right from its inception. Therefore, it's a house of prayer for all nations. Nobody should have the arrogance to appropriate Solusi and make it his personal preserve that this one, Solusi, is ours. You, you are a visitor. You, you are a stranger. No, this one, this Solusi, it was built by different people, by Zambians. They were here. Mayenza was Zambian. You, your grandfather, when Mayenza was being baptized, your grandfather was busy smoking uh, cigarettes there. And uh, you now come later and say, I don't want others to be here. I don't, no, no. If uh, you want to be arrogant, go to your grandfather's graves there and uh, make that arrogance. But this one is a house of prayer for all nations. Everybody is at home here. It is God's place. And uh, don't try to tribalize it. Don't try to make it. No, here, yeah, this is in Zimbabwe. It's our place uh, you, you are visiting. You know, there is some strange language which is developing 
in the church, quite strange, where people are beginning to say, our, our, as though this Adventist church is local. This is not Mzaraban, this place. Ah, uh, it's not. It's not Uzumba Maramba Fungwe here, this place. No, it's not Lagapia, it's not Malambuz. It's not Cholocho, this one. It's not. It's God's place, a house of prayer for all nations. All of us belong. We are in our Father's house. Yes. Don't try to run away with Solus. Run away with your village there, away from here. But this one, it is God's place. And more importantly, God has a mission. Why this place was established? It was established out of sacrifice. People gave their lives for this place to be there. Don't come here to come for your own good. I have come here in order to enrich myself. Uh, people who came here never came here to be rich. They gave their lives. There are people at times when we invite them to come at Solusi, to come and work at Solusi, they begin to ask us, what is there for me? What is the package? How much will you give us? How much will you give me? Uh, when Tripp left America, he never asked how much is the salary at Solusi. There was nothing actually what made them to succumb to malaria. It was because of starvation. They were hungry. After they had died, the general policy, general conference had to craft a policy for missionaries after they had seen them starve here. So they never came here to eat or to get things. They came here to save. So the language of what is there for me, what will I get? You can get many things out of here, but here it's for people who have come to save, who tell themselves, I am going to Solusi, I am going there for service. My family, we are going to Solusi. What is there for us, we don't know, but the Lord will provide. And they chose this place. Not the best place. Illogical. It's not the best place. But it is the right place. Right place for training students. Uh, some may be wondering, you may be wondering, why did my parents send me here? Why did I choose to come to Solusi as a student, to come and learn here? Let me assure you, you are at the right place. A place of prayer for all nations. You don't find so many universities where you will find different nationalities. No. Honestly, yes, I mean, you may, in, in Zimbabwe, I know at least, in Zim, you will hardly find a university where you will meet a Mtswana, meet a Zambian, meet a Mozambican, meet an Angolan, meet a South African, right in one place. You don't. And that is the very reason why we have universities. Universities are there to enlarge our worldview. They are there for exposure. You can't go to a university where everyone is from Gokwe. Uh, everyone from Gokwe. You may be getting a very good GPA, but you are being confined to Gokwe. And when you come out, you, your worldview is still limited to Gokwe. Kugokwe atidaro. No, open your worldview. The world is larger than Cholocho. It's much larger than Cholocho. There are other places in the world that you need to understand, and you can understand them from being at Solusi. 
So praise God, you are a solution. Does it have its shortcomings? Yes, it does. And should it be improved? Yes, they should. But even then, praise God, you are at the house of prayer for all nations. Not only that, Solusi is a place in the wilderness where the, I, I call it the wilderness of Solusi, where you are far from the meeting crowd, far away. And uh, at times you wonder, uh, how will I get to town? It's difficult, it's expensive, $5, $10 to and from town. It keeps you here at Solusi. And uh, for that reason, you are confined to the desert of Solusi. Remain within the desert of Solusi. The reason why you must be here in the desert of Solusi, you have to be at a place where you can pray. These trees, all this vegetation is a place where you can pray without any disturbance, where you can talk to God without anybody looking at you. What is this one doing? This is what you have to capitalize on. Your presence at Solusi must make you to pray. It's a house of prayer for all nations. And uh, as I get to the close of my message, you know, I call upon us, each of us, who have been called to come and serve in this place. Let's remember, it is God's place. And God could have invited other people, but he gave you the privilege to come and serve you. At times, there are people who don't understand why they are at Solus, who don't want to serve. They are frustrated by service. Every morning, as they wake up, they are complaining. Ha, ah, Solus. And uh, they think Solusi is the most horrible place in the world. Uh, there is nothing worse than Solusi. Waking up in the morning, complaining. I used to have a brother uh, some years ago, not at Solusi, uh, but at Lower Colour Mission, who would complain early in the morning as we were coming out from breakfast. He was already complaining. Uh, uh, already complaining about lunch before brushing his teeth for breakfast. Uh, already angry about lunch. Uh, there are people who, whose ministry is a ministry of complaint. A ministry of complaining. Uh, before, right now, they are already complaining about final exams. Before, before they are written, you will see how this order, this order of solution, they are already complaining. They are already complaining about next semester. They are already complaining about graduation. How graduation will be, it will be chaos. You will see, chaos, chaos, chaos. But you are not yet done with your assignments, but you are already complaining about graduation. Ministry of complaint. Complaint. Always eager to identify something which is wrong. It's a place of prayer to call upon the Lord. And yes, I also at the same time invite those who may not be doing things right. This place is a place of sacrifice. There are people who can be lazy at solution and do nothing and not do their part. There are people who can be lazy. Students write emails to them, never respond. Do this, never respond. And they are busy on WhatsApp, WhatsApping. Or somebody is knocking at the door, no response. But you can hear voices inside 
Yevo ke ipe miami jani. How? There are people inside. Not caring at all about service, enjoying to enjoying the chats inside, enjoying life inside. This is not what Trip did when he came here. They came here to die to save. They gave their lives. And uh, it's not right for you to be there closed in your office, locked the door, somebody is knocking, knocking for service, desperately in need of service. And uh, you are inside your office, talking, enjoying, and uh, clapping hands. Hey, who are we inside there? Not saving people. It's not right. It's not what God wants. And there are people who can be lazy. Who can be lazy? Who can do nothing? Wait for payday to be paid. And uh, when payday comes, they say it's not enough. But uh, during the month, nothing has been happening. Lazing around. It can't be right. It can not be right. And uh, also, you can have students who don't do their assignments plagiarize. And uh, unfortunately, at times even pastors uh, who can plagiarize, steal everything, copy paste, and uh, then say, Lord, you are preparing us to go and save. Save as plagiarists. How? 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 This is a house of prayer. It's not a den of thieves. We have turned it into a den of thieves. People who want to get degrees for nothing just go and steal what others have done. And we say, Lord, I am a graduate, BPA, Accounting, Solusi University, BPA, plagiarism. Uh, you have plagiarized everything. And people who don't want to work, they want to be paid for not working. Specialists in mediocrity, efficiently mediocre, uh, willing to receive without giving anything. Lord, help us. Help us here. This is God's place, a house of prayer for all nations. God sent a tobacco merchant to come here because he had an appointment with him here. He sent Lutuli from South Africa. He told him to come here because he had an appointment with him here. He told Mayenza to be captured in Zambia to come here because he had an appointment with him here. He told Kamichael to come from America to come and die here because he had an appointment with him here. He told you to come here because he has an appointment with you here. Not to steal, but to pray, to call upon his name. This week, may the Lord help us to know him, to see him, and uh, become what he desires us to be, a place of prayer for all nations. May God bless us.